Recently, I made a video where I showed you a easy blueprint that you can apply to any transformation of function problem. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you an example of actually applying this blueprint so that you can see exactly how to do this. I'll link to that other video I mentioned at the very end of this one. So if you do wanna check that out, you can do that after seeing this example problem. I think this will really help you to understand how transformations of functions work. So if you're stuck on a problem that says something like, describe the transformations of f to g, this is the video for you. So let's go ahead and jump right into the example and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Describe the sequence of transformations from f to g. So the first thing you wanna do when you're doing a problem like this is figure out what your parent function is that you wanna compare this, this function to. So like we have uh, in this case, having this x plus or minus some number all raised up to the second power, that generally means that our parent function that we're gonna be looking at is just gonna be f of x equals x squared. So a parent function in general is really just kind of like the bare bones, simplest version of whatever function you're looking at. So, you know, typically that's just gonna be something straightforward like x squared, x cubed, you know, maybe there's a trig function, sine, cosine, something like that. Your parent function should be kind of the most simplified version of the function that you're, you're dealing with here. And then you wanna think about using the general uh, kind of template that I was just talking about a minute ago, you wanna think about what transformations are being applied to this parent function so that it would become the function that we're dealing with here. So if we remember that template, basically just says that our g of x is gonna be a times f of b times x minus h in parentheses plus k. So what we wanna do is think about how we can kind of create our g of x. Just think of it in terms of the a, b, h, and k that we have here in this template, knowing that our function f of x is x squared, and then we can compare this to the g of x we were given. So think about what g of x would be if we know f of x is x squared, and we're trying to find a of f of b of x minus h plus k. So basically what this is saying, what this notation is saying, is we're gonna have a times whatever this whole thing is, plus k, okay? So what we need to figure out then is what is f of b of x minus h? Well, what is this notation saying? This notation says, whenever you have f of anything, f of question mark, whatever the thing is that's in here, whatever this inside your parentheses is, in this case, it's b times x minus h, but it doesn't matter what it is. Whatever the thing inside your parentheses here when you have f of something is, all that's saying is go to your function f of x, wherever you see an x in your function, so in this case, we only have a single x in it, which is right here, you're just gonna replace that x with whatever is in the parentheses here. So in this case, we're gonna go to our function f of x, we're gonna replace this one x with whatever is in the parentheses here. So in this case, what is in the parentheses is b times x minus h. So we're just gonna take this and replace our x with it in our function. If we do that, we're gonna have b times x minus h all squared because we've just replaced our x, which was being squared with this whole thing here. So now that's all being squared. And then we're just gonna have a times that and then plus k. So this is kind of the general template for what a quadratic function, you know, whenever you have just a parabola, comparing that to your parent function x squared, this is kind of the, the specified template for quadratic functions. What we had here, a times f of b times x minus h all plus k, that is a more generic template that can be applied to any type of function. Whereas this specific template here is what it looks like when you're applying this kind of general transformation template, specifically when your parent function is x squared. So now we can just compare the components of this template to the components of the g of x we were given here and figure out 
what those transformations are. So in this case, you can see we have uh, a number being multiplied out front of the thing that's all being raised up to the second power. So just to kind of make some clear comparisons here, we have a bunch of stuff all being raised up to the second power. So that's going to definitely be basically these parentheses right here. So we know that this thing being multiplied by all that, well, that's got to be your A. So in this case, we know A is two. Okay. We don't really have a B value, which means that the B is basically implied to be one. So there's not a B value acting in this case. So if our B is one, that tells us that we're not applying any sort of transformation uh, by stretching horizontally. Okay. Then the thing we have X plus or minus some number, we have basically X minus seven. That tells us that our, our minus H is minus seven. So our H must be seven. Okay. And then we don't have any number being added or subtracted out here. So basically our K is a zero. So basically our B and our K are not really applying any sort of transformations here. We don't really have to worry about those. However, we do have an A value of two and an H value of seven. Um, so that tells us since we have X minus seven, we're going to be shifting to the right in the positive x direction. Remember the H and the B kind of behave opposite of how you'd expect them to. So we're going to move to the right seven units. Um, and we are also going to be stretching by a factor of two in the vertical direction. So we're going to stretch vertically by a factor of two. So those are essentially the transformations that this is, is telling us to do to the parent function of x squared. We're stretching vertically by a factor of two, and then we're shifting to the right seven units. Like I said at the beginning of this video, now that you've seen an example of how to do these kinds of problems, you're definitely gonna wanna go check out that video right over there where I talk about the general blueprint that you can apply to any of these function transformation problems that you're likely to run into. So go click that video, keep this brain train rolling, and I'm sure you'll be feeling even better about these problems after that one.